हेलो वेलकम टू बायो क्लास एंड माई सेल्फ नरेंद्र जे एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डाइजेशन एंड अब्सॉर्प्शन एंड विच इज वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट इन ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी एंड वी स्टार्ट विद ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी डाइजेशन एंड अब्सॉर्प्शन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल what is the meaning of digestion and as well as absorption you remember here that digestion digestion and absorption absorption these two remember these two words digestion is a function number 1 and digestion after completion of the function digestion the absorption have to be takes place means these two names indicates they are the functions digestion is the one function and absorption is the another function what is the function of this digestion what is the definition for digestion is there any alternative name for the digestion yes in bio there are so many alternative names and you have to remember those alternative names very clearly you remember the another name for digestion is hydrolysis the digestion is also called hydrolysis hydrolysis the another name for digestion is hydrolysis you remember here wherever i can use i can use digestion and i can also use hydrolysis both indicates the same both indicates the same what is the function number 1 the function number 1 is digestion and function number 2 is absorption so after completion of function number 1 we have to move into the function number 2 what is the function number 1 digestion which is also called with an another name the another name for digestion is hydrolysis what is the definition for digestion first of all the definition for digestion is the breaking down of a complex molecules there are some big molecules will be present sir where these big molecules will present somewhere they are present i will tell the breaking down of complex molecules into simple absorbable molecule is called digestion there are some big molecules are present these big molecules have to be broken down broken down broken down and they have they have to convert into the simple molecules and these simple molecules which can easily get absorbed here the main thing is there are some big big molecules are there and those big big molecules have to get broken down broken down broken down into small small molecules and these small molecules can easily get absorbed to where they will absorb sir they are going to absorb into a fluid the fluid we call it as blood why they have to absorb into blood that is the thing that is the theme why these molecules have to be absorbed into the blood later we will discuss later we can get the answer for this why the complex why the molecules have to be absorbed into the blood. later we discuss first of all digestion which is also called with another name which is called hydrolysis hydrolysis what is the definition i told the process of conversion of or the process of breaking down of complex molecules into simple absorbable molecules is called digestion or also called hydrolysis sir what are the complex molecules simply you said that the breaking down of a complex molecules complex molecules into simple absorbable molecules simple absorbable molecule this process i called it as digestion which is also called with a name known as hydrolysis this is the definition this is the definition the process of conversion of complex molecules into simple absorbable molecule where this simple absorbable molecule get absorbed they can easily absorb into the fluid which is present in our body which we call it as a blood next sir what are these complex molecules first where these complex molecules are present and why we are eating the food material after eating the food material what is happening now you remember all the questions i can give the clarity for you now you remember complex molecules what is this complex molecule where these complex molecules are present the complex molecule is the complex molecule is food food is the complex molecule 
food is the complex molecule yeah fine you remember here the food is the complex molecule i told okay fine food which is a complex molecule food contains three complex molecules you remember here three is a very very important in bio so many of the terms are having the three 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 for example food contain how many complex molecule three blood vessels are of how many types here three how many types of symmetry three how many types of neurons here three in this manner how many types of celomes three types of serum in this manner three you are going to get so many times and regarding all those later we can discuss first of all food which is a complex molecule food is a complex molecule the food that what we are eating that food is a complex molecule this food contains three complex molecules what are the three three big molecules are present those big molecules we call them as macro molecule why because a molecule is very big big means what macro macro molecule food contains three complex molecules food is the complex molecule food is the complex molecule and a food is complex molecule in this food three complex molecules will be present what are those three complex molecule number 1 is carbohydrate number 1 is carbohydrates carbohydrate is a complex molecule which is present in the food and number 2 the second complex molecule is proteins the second complex molecule is protein protein is also a one big molecule which is present in our food and the third complex molecule is fat the third complex molecule is fats third complex molecule is fat sir what is this complex molecules you are telling that food contains some complex molecules yeah how many complex molecules are present in food means three complex molecules are present number 1 is a carbohydrate and number 2 is a protein and number 3 is a fat okay fine what is this complex molecule now we remember for example here there is a presence of a big wall you all of you have seen wall wall is a complex molecule wall is a complex molecule wall is a complex molecule means this wall is made up with which molecule the wall is made up with the simple molecule those simple molecules we call them as bricks wall is the complex molecule okay sir wall is the complex molecule means this complex molecule wall is made up of water it's made up of simple molecule then what is the simple molecule for wall bricks are the simple molecule for wall now same like that only carbohydrate is like a wall which is a complex molecule then it is made up of some simple molecule what are those simple molecule for example here there is a presence of sugar glucose and here there is a presence of another glucose molecule these two glucose molecules are joined and there is the another glucose molecule glucose molecule is joined and there is the another complex molecule another molecule glucose and another glucose molecule and another simple glucose molecule and another simple glucose molecule all these simple glucose molecules are bonded with chains chains so all these simple glucose molecule made a one complex molecule that complex molecule i am calling it as carbohydrate nothing that's all that's all carbohydrate is a complex molecule which is made up with so many simple molecule best example as a photo now wall which is a complex molecule which is made up with a simple molecule what are the simple molecules of wall means bricks same like it only protein protein is a complex molecule which is made up with the simple molecule so what are the simple molecules for protein this is the acid what acid amino acid one amino acid and the another amino acid and these two amino acid are joined by a bond which we call it as a peptide bond in the further class we can discuss about that and there is another peptide bond another amino acid another peptide bond another amino acid in this manner group of amino acids are present all this group of amino acids we call it as complex molecule that complex molecule is nothing but a protein same like it only fats there are some simple molecules are joining those simple molecule we make the complex molecule that complex molecule we call it as fat ah fine what i told these complex molecules how to undergo the function number 1 what is that function number 1 digestion these complex molecules how to undergo digestion digestion which is also called hydrolysis what is the definition for digestion conversion of or breaking down of 
complex molecules into simple absorbable molecule how many complex molecules three carbohydrate protein and as well as fats what is this sir you are telling food contain carbohydrate food contain protein food contain fat of course yes the rice that what you are eating it is a carbohydrate the curry is that what you are eating like egg chicken mutton broccoli etc etc all they are the proteins and the fats while you preparing the curries you are going to add the oil oil is a what fat without knowing to ourselves only we are eating the carbohydrate we are eating the protein and we are eating the fat all the food that what we have eaten that food is undergoing what digestion means it have to break down break down for what purpose to get absorbed into the blood why they have to absorb means later okay fine these complex molecules carbohydrate undergoing the function digestion undergoing the function digestion digestion is completed and converted into simple absorbable molecule converted into simple absorbable molecule sir what is the simple absorbable molecule the simple absorbable molecule for carbohydrate is glucose major one is glucose so many glucose molecules you will get if you break a one wall you will get only one brick no you will get so many number of bricks you are getting same like that only carbohydrate is a complex molecule which is made up of so many number of glucose molecule whenever these are broken down whenever all the bonds are broken down at the time you are getting the so many number of glucose molecules so what i can say what is the end product of carbohydrate the end product of carbohydrate is glucose now same like that only proteins also will undergo the function digestion at the time proteins when undergo digestion they are also giving their simple molecules tell me what are the simple molecules for the protein the simple molecules for protein is the chain is broken down the chain is broken down the chain is broken down yes at the time you will get so many number of what is it so many number of amino acids amino acids you will get so end product of carbohydrate is glucose and end products of protein is amino acids you will get and come to the fats last complex molecule what is the end product of the fat fat also will undergo the function digestion undergo the function digestion and it is giving the simple molecule so it will give the simple two simple molecule number one is fatty acids fatty acids and number two is glycerol number 2 is glycerol fat is undergoing the digestion for hydrolysis and giving the molecules fatty acids and glycerols so many number of fatty acids so many number of glycerols you will get so this glucose amino acid fatty acids and glycerols are very very small in size so can i call this as micro molecule yes these are large in size carbohydrate protein fat these three are large in size so they are macro molecule macro molecules undergo digestion and give the simple molecule these simple molecules are small in size because of that only i call it as a micro molecule these simple molecules because of their small size they can easily get get what happen absorb absorb into where blood why because big big molecules cannot get absorbed why because their size is very large simple molecules can easily get absorbed that's the reason for that purpose only the function have to be takes place digestion which is also called with another name the another name is hydrolysis hydrolysis first thing you have to keep this in your mind carbohydrate end product of carbohydrate is what glucose end product of protein is what amino acid end product of fats is what fatty acid and glycerol means carbohydrate completely get digested and gives glucose end product is glucose after that there is nothing is there end product of protein is what amino acid end product of fat is what fatty acid and as well as glycerol glycerol okay fine so digestion you told another name for digestion is hydrolysis another name for digestion is hydrolysis how this digestion will be takes place the digestion can successfully completed by two process the digestion can successfully completed by two process complex molecules can broken down in two ways number one is mechanical digestion nothing but digestion only nothing but digestion only that digestion is called mechanical digestion why it is called mechanical digestion why because you are chewing the physically you are breaking the complex molecule 
physically with the, with teeth you are crushing the food molecule means physical digestion also we call it as physical digestion is also called mechanical digestion and next type of second type of digestion is chemical digestion chemical digestion nothing but digestion means wherever you find the word digestion immediately you have to remember the definition for digestion breaking down of complex molecule into simple absorbable molecule how can it will break it can break by mechanically chewing the food material mastication chewing is also called mastication and number two chemicals will be present in our body some chemicals will break the complex molecule so in the presence of chemicals the digestion is happening because of that only that digestion we call it as chemical digestion see digestion which is also called with another name is hydrolysis breaking down of complex molecule into simple absorbable molecule is of two types mechanical digestion which happens physically under our presence and a chemical digestion some chemicals will break which we can't control all those chemical digestion and mechanical digestion why we are eating the food material first of all food is the basic requirement basic requirement for all living organisms which gives energy which gives energy just imagine you are not eating the food material for 3 to 5 days at that time you are very active no at that time all of you becoming very dull and very inactive and not able to do any work if you want to do any work you require energy if you want energy you have to eat the food material the food material what we are eating that food material have to get digest digestion of how many complex molecule three gives rise to glucose the end product of carbohydrate amino acid the end product of protein fatty acid and glycerols the end products of fat and it performs by how many process two process mechanical digestion and chemical digestion chemical digestion and the food is also required for growth purpose not growth purpose and as well as repair repair of damaged parts the food is required for growth so just remember if child is born if the child is not eating the food material or not drinking the milk do you think that he can grow no he have to eat he have to supply with some food material because of that only mother is feeding with her milk at the time he can easily get grow if any something repair if any wound is happen that is going to what happen heal yes that is called repair who is responsible for repairing majorly protein proteins are responsible for repairing the damaged tissue proteins are majorly essential for repairing the damaged tissue and along with that our body also requires some amount of minerals some amount of minerals and along with that our body also require in a small amount of vitamins nothing but vitamins vitamins we have to supply majorly these three along with these three also requirement of small amount small amount of minerals and a small amount of vitamins and along with that we also have to drink water h2o water we have to drink because which prevent us from dehydration dehydration means what loss of water loss of water means in our body 90 percentage is 95 percentage is water only if water is gradually decreasing in our body our lips and our tongue and our skin becomes dry dry at that time the person is going to what happen die to prevent us from dehydration we have to drink the water to get energy we have to eat the food material food material contain three complex molecule and along with these three complex molecule our body also require a small amount of minerals some minerals and a small amount of vitamins are required and the digestion is completed by two process number 1 is mechanical digestion and number 2 is chemical digestion in these two which one is the most important and most time taking chemical digestion is most important type of digestion most of the food material is digesting by chemical digestion only next 
Let's see. Sir, it is a function. Digestion is the function I told. Another name for digestion is what? Hydrolysis. To perform any function, there is a, we require a place. We require a place. We require a place. What is that place? What is that place? And before going into that place, I told that in the presence of chemicals, the food is digesting. Who is secreting these chemicals? Who is secreting these chemicals? These chemicals are secreted by glands. These chemicals are secreted by glands. You remember here, whenever you heard the word gland, immediately you have to remember its function is secreting something. Something it will secrete. Its function is secretion. If any organ or if any cell function is secreting, we have to call it as a gland. For example, sweat gland. Why are you calling it as a sweat gland? Why? Because those cell, those are secreting the sweat. Secreting the sweat. Memory gland. Why you call them as memory gland? Why? Because gland means its function is secretion. What it is secreting? Milk. Oil gland. Gland means what? Function is secretion. Then what it is secreting? Oil. So in this manner, Whenever you heard the word gland, immediately you have to remember its function is secreting something. You know, liver will secrete bile juice, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, thymus gland, 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 gland. Gland means its function is secretion. Keep that in your mind. Now let's see. Chemicals are secreted from glands. The gland which is secreting the chemical, that chemical is helping in digestion. The chemical is performing the function digestion. So, these glands are secreting the chemicals, those chemicals helping in digestion. Because of that only these glands we call them as digestive glands. Because of that only those glands we call them as digestive glands. Why? Because, why those glands are called digestive glands? The chemicals that are secreting from those glands helping in digestion. Because of that only those glands we call them as digestive glands. Later we will discuss how many digestive glands are present and what they are secreting. What they are saying to perform the function, function means what? For example, marriage function hmm. to perform this marriage function, some place is required to do the one more function, some place is required. Now, same like that only digestion is the function to perform this function. We require a place, we require a place. What is that place? That place we call it as elementary canal. That place we call it as elementary canal or also called digestive tract digestive tract or also called alimentary gut g u t or simply you call it as gut see how many names see how many names it is and three names those three names you have to remember they can ask any question or it is also called a canal. Simply I can write in the simple words. Huh? Why we have to waste all this? Simply I can write the function that is happening in elementary canal. AC. AC. AC means not air conditioner. It is elementary canal. And it is also called a canal. In this canal, digestion is happening because of that only that canal is called digestive canal. Digestive canal. And or it is also called gut. Simply you call it as gut. Simply you call, call it as gut. G-U-T. Gut. Or another name. It is like a track. Like a railway track. It is like a railway track. In the track the function is happening. What function? Digestion function is happening. Because of that one it is also called digestive track. Digestive track. To perform the function digestion we require a place. What that place name is? AC. Elementary canal. DC. Digestive canal. Gut or DT digestive tract right so what I would like to say is to perform the function digestion chemicals are required and the gut is required so chemicals are producing from digestive gland and the function is happening in elementary canal so we require digestive glands to complete the function digestion we require the digestive glands and we require the elementary canal Elementary canal, which is also called digestive canal, which is also called gut, or which is also called digestive tract. Fine. 
Now you remember here. Regarding elementary canal, we discussed today. We discussed about this elementary canal. The elementary canal begins with the anterior opening. That anterior opening we call it as mouth. The anterior opening we call it as mouth. Mouth is mouth. Mouth means just our upper lip and our lower lip, which are both are mobile. Lips are mobile. Both upper lip and lower lip together we call it as mouth. First part of elementary canal. What is the first part of elementary canal? Mouth. Upper lip and lower lip. Mouth is leading to the one cavity. Cavity means empty space. Whenever you heard the word cavity, you remember empty space. Don't eat much chocolate, chocolates, you will get teeth cavities. Yeah, in advertisement you heard about this. Cavity means what empty space. Yes, this cavity is called buccal cavity. B-U-C-C-A-L. Buccal cavity. So I will write all the names in the short form only. All the names in the short form only. Is called buccal cavity. B-U-C-C-A-L. Buccal cavity. And another name for buccal cavity is oral cavity. Oral cavity. Yeah, you may heard about the oral B brush. B means brush. We are keeping in a one cavity. What cavity? Oral cavity. Because of the tool that brush company name is Oral B. Oral B. Don't we have to take the tablet orally. Orally means what? Through the mouth. Like this so many names will be there. Mouth, upper lip and lower lip. Mouth is leading to the empty space. All this is empty space. That empty space is called buccal cavity. And another name for buccal cavity is oral cavity. Another names are very very important. Digestion another name, hydrolysis. Elementary canal another name, digestive canal. Another name, gut. Another name, digestive tract. Same. Mouth. Elementary canal beginning with anterior opening, a top opening, anterior opening. What is anterior opening? Mouth. Mouth leading to the cavity. What cavity? Buccal cavity. What is the another name for buccal cavity? Oral cavity. The oral cavity is leading to a short tube. Short tube. Very, very short tube. That short tube we call it as pharynx. That short tube I call it as pharynx. Pharynx is what tube? Short tube. Its length is very short and it is appear like tube. It appears like tube and its length is very short, so it is short tube. And the pharynx is leading to the long tube. That long tube we call it as esophagus. That long tube we call it as esophagus. Esophagus is also a what? Tube. But the length of it is very long because of that only it is a long tube. What is a short tube? Pharynx. What is a long tube? Esophagus. And in this esophagus, food will pass. Because of that only esophagus is also called food pipe. Because of that only esophagus is also called food pipe. Esophagus, which is a long tube and it is a pipe-like appearance and it is transporting the food. Oh, this man is transporting, so it is a food pipe. Food pipe. And esophagus is leading to the Esophagus is leading to the organ which we call it as stomach. The esophagus is leading to the organ which we call it as a stomach. What is the another name for stomach? Another name, another name, come on, come on. What is the another name for stomach? Is gastric. The another name for stomach is gastric because of that only if acidity is happened, we won't say stomach problem. We say gastric problem. Indicating that in my stomach the problem is there problem is there so another name for stomach is gastric you remember the another names gastric another name for stomach is gastric and what is the shape of the stomach the shape of the stomach is j shape the shape of the stomach is j shape it is having the j shape i don't know how it is having the j shape while i'm drawing the diagram of the stomach don't ask me sir it is not at all looking like j but they mentioned that stomach the another name for stomach is gastric and it having the shape is J shape. You remember here are the another names, how many another names I told. Buccal cavity, also called oral cavity. Esophagus, also called food pipe. Stomach, also called gastric and the shape of the stomach is J shape. J shape. And stomach is leading to the intestine. Intestine. Initially, the intestine diameter is very small. For example, this is the intestine. Here the diameter is this much. So very small. 
because of that only that is small intestine that is small intestine and after going into deep the small intestine is leading to the once again intestinal part but this time the diameter of the intestine is very large very large because of that only that intestine we call it as large intestine large intestine and large intestine is opening into the posterior opening that posterior opening we call it as anus anus so there is a presence of anterior opening and presence of posterior opening anterior opening is what mouth where we are taking the food material and a posterior opening is what anus where we are excreting the waste material so in between there is a presence of so many part in this track only the function is happening what is it function digestion so all this from anterior opening mouth to the posterior opening anus all we call it as elementary canal or also called digestive canal or also called gut or also called digestive tract and in this canal only function is happening what is the function digestion another name for digestion is what hydrolysis so digestion starts at where remember digestion that starts in bc the digestion that starts in bc buccal cavity in buccal cavity the function digestion is initiated we can also say sometimes mouth in mouth buccal cavity will uh, in mouth digestion will begin but actually mouth means upper lip and lower lip is called mouth so i am not sure that i am not sure that in mouth uh, the digestion will happen it is not correct we can say digestion starts from buccal cavity digestion starts from buccal cavity and where digestion will complete it digestion is completing means what all complex molecules are converted into simple molecules digestion is completed means all complex molecules are converted into simple molecules means digestion is completed where the simple molecules are formed where the digestion is completed the digestion is completed in the spine what spine that is the digestion is completed in the small intestine the digestion is completed in the small intestine digestion started in the buccal cavity another name for buccal cavity is what oral cavity it is started here and where it is completed it is completed in the small intestine okay function digestion is over after digestion what absorption after digestion is what absorption digestion is completed in small intestine and absorption maximum amount of absorption also happens in small intestine only you keep remember this digestion starts in buccal cavity it completes in small intestine glucose end products are formed in small intestine absorption happen maximum amount of absorption happens in small intestine absorbing into where blood this is the basic thing you should know about the digestion anterior opening mouth posterior opening anus digestion begins in buccal cavity digestion completes in small intestine absorption completes maximum amount of absorption completes in small intestine these things you have to keep in your mind these things now you remember if you go further if they ask write down the sequence of elementary canal means you can write down that anterior opening is what mouth mouth leads to buccal cavity buccal cavity leads to pharynx pharynx leads to esophagus esophagus leads to stomach stomach leads to small intestine small intestine leads to large intestine large intestine leads to posterior opening is anus simply you can write that one shape of the stomach j shape another name for stomach gastric another name for esophagus food pipe another name for buccal cavity oral cavity for some more detail it is a basic thing which you will learn it in the 8th standard and 9th standard you will get all those but you have to learn in detail you have to learn further as of i told that the stomach another name for stomach is gastric and its shape is j shape j shape the stomach is divided into four parts the human being stomach is divided into majorly four parts you have to remember these four parts later i will make the diagram later i will make the diagram four parts the human being stomach is divided into four parts what are the four parts 
The first part of this talk is cardiac. The first part of this stomach is cardiac. Why? Because that part of stomach is very near to heart. Heart is made up of which muscle? Cardiac. Cardiac muscle. So the first part of this stomach is cardiac. And second part of the stomach is fundus. F U N D U S. Fundus. The second part of this stomach is fundus. And third part of this stomach is main body. It is main. It is main. So it is only main body. The third part of this stomach is main body. And the fourth part of this stomach is pyloric. Pyloric. The fourth part of this stomach is pyloric. These are the four parts of this stomach. Let me represent the diagram. First, you have to know stomach is having another name is gastric and it is J shape. The stomach is divided into four parts. Number one is cardiac, number two is fundus, number three is main body, and number four is pyloric. This is about the stomach. Now go for the small intestine. Go for the small intestine. What is the small intestine? The small intestine is also further divided into three parts. The small intestine is divided into three parts. The small intestine is divided into three parts. What are the three parts of small intestine? The first part of the small intestine is duodenum. Duodenum. The first part of the small intestine is duodenum. And what is the shape of the duodenum? The shape of the duodenum is C shape. The shape of the duodenum is C shape. You just remember duodenum spelling starting with D and its shape is C shape. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. C shape to duodenum. C shape to duodenum. First part of small intestine is duodenum. And the shape of the duodenum is C shape. C shape to duodenum. And the second part of the small intestine is jejunum. The second part of the small intestine is jejunum. Jejunum. And the third part of the small intestine is ileum. The third part of the small intestine is ileum. You have to remember here. You have to remember. Jejunum is Jejunum is long coiled. Long coiled. Jejunum is long coiled. Means like this, like this, like this. Very, very long coils will be there. Long coils. And ileum. Ileum is highly coiled. Ilium is highly coiled. Highly coiled, which having a lot of foldings like this. Lot of foldings like this. How to remember? So many students will get confused in this. Which one is long coiled? Which one is highly coiled? Whether jejunum is highly coiled, whether ilium is long coiled, no need of getting confusion. You remember one thing. Ilium spelling starting with I. Ilium spelling starting with I. Ilium is what coiled? Highly coiled. In a highly coiled, what is the second letter? I. So you remember it like that. Okay, highly coiled. I is there. I means ilium. So ilium is highly coiled. If you remember one, automatically you can remember another thing. Ilium is what coiled? Highly coiled. Then jejunum is what coiled? Long coiled. Duodenum is what shape? C shape. So the stomach, sorry, small intestine. Divided into three parts. Number one is duodenum. Number two is jejunum. Number three is ileum. Jejunum shape is C shape. Jejunum, sorry, duodenum shape is C shape. Jejunum is long coiled. Ileum, I is there now. So it is what coiled? Highly coiled. You remember these hints like that. Next, intestine. What is the third, second intestine? Large intestine. This large intestine also you have to learn. Large intestine. The large intestine is also divided into three parts. See how many threes we got now? How many times we got three parts, three parts, three parts? How many complex molecules? Three. How many complex molecules? Three. Carbohydrate, proteins, and fats. Small intestine divided into how many parts? Three parts. 
And once again, large intestine divided into how many parts? Three parts. Three, 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 three. You will get lot of threes. You will get lot of threes. Now let's see large intestine. The first part of the large intestine is cecum. The first part of large intestine is cecum. I will tell what is a cecum and what is present. Inside of the cecum, there is a presence of lot of bacteria. Microorganisms are present here. A short microorganisms are present, which we call them as bacteria, which are useful bacteria. In our body, there is approximately 2 kgs of bacteria. For example, my body weight is 72. My body weight is 72. In that 72, 2 kgs of our my body weight is because of bacteria. Every human being having 2 kgs of bacteria. You remember that. Yes, in that is full of bacteria are present in the first part of large intestine. That first part of the large intestine, we call it as cecum. Okay, come to the second part. The second part of the large intestine is colon. C O L O N. Colon. The second part of large intestine is colon. And third part of the large intestine is rectum. The third part of the large intestine is rectum. Rectum. R E C T U. Yeah. Rectum. Rectum. Here you remember. Large intestine which is divided into three parts. Cecum, colon, rectum. If you remember this colon, about this colon. The colon part of large intestine is further divided into four parts based upon how it is passing. How it is passing. Colon is divided into four parts. Colon is divided into four parts. Now, colon is moving upward. Upward means ascending or descending. Ascending. So, this is ascending colon. Later, it is moving in the transverse section. This is what section? Transverse section. So, it is moving in this manner. So, it is transverse colon. Later, colon is moving downwards. So, at that time, what colon? If it is moving upwards, ascending colon. If it is moving downwards, descending colon. And later, colon is making this sigma-shaped structure. So, it is called sigmoid colon. So, ascending colon. Second one is transverse colon. Third one is descending colon and fourth one is sigmoid colon. Sigmoid colon. And the sigmoid colon is the last part of colon which is finally opening into the rectum. And the rectum which is the last part of large intestine which finally opens out through anus. This is some complicated sequence. Complicated. Initially, we read only mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. So, when they ask the arrange the elementary canal, arrange the elementary canal detail, they won't give directly. In need, they won't give directly. Why? Because you want to become a doctor means you have to be complicated. You should think very complicatedly. So, because of that only, they what they will ask. Sequence. That sequence is anterior opening is what? Mouth. Mouth is leading to the buccal cavity. Another way for buccal cavity is oral cavity. It is leading to the short tube pharynx. Pharynx is leading to the esophagus. Another name is foot pipe. Esophagus is leading to the stomach. Yeah. Esophagus is leading to the stomach. Yeah. Into which part of the stomach? What is the first part of the stomach? Cardiac. That you have to remember. Into the cardiac. Cardiac is leading to where? Fundus. Fundus is leading to where? Main body. And main body is leading into where? Pyloric. So all these four part is telling about stomach. Telling about stomach. And the last part of the stomach which is pyloric. Last part of the stomach which is pyloric. Is opening into the first part of the small intestine which we call as deodic. That is one second sequence. Pyloric is opening into duodenum, the shape of the duodenum C shape, and the duodenum is opening into the long coiled jejunum. <coughs> Sorry, jejunum. <coughs> jejunum is opening into the highly coiled structure ileum. So in this manner, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. After small intestine, which intestine? Large intestine. In large intestine, what is the first part? Cecum. So last part of small intestine ileum 
is opening into the first part of the large intestine which is called cecum and the cecum is opening into where colon yes which colon first ascending colon so cecum to ascending colon ascending colon to transverse colon transverse colon to descending colon descending colon to sigmoid colon and sigmoid colon to last part of the large intestine that is rectum rectum is opening out through anus this is the complicated sequence so here what i would like to say is cardiac fundus main body pyloric is a parts of stomach duodenum duodenum jejunum and ileum are the parts of small intestine small intestine and cecum cecum ascending colon transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon and rectum all these are the parts of large intestine and post opening is anus you see mouth upper cavity parallax esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus so this is the complicated sequence that you have to keep in your mind also that you have to keep in your mind also now let come to the diagrammatical representation diagrammatical representation If you go for the diagrammatical representation, it is very good to see and very easy to remember. Very easy to remember. So let's see the diagrammatical representation of digestive system or digestive tract. So here there is the presence of a human being. Which is having the anterior opening. Having the anterior opening, which having the anterior. Opening. Just imagine it is a human being. It is not looking like human being. Wait. Oh, very complicated. Yeah, better, far better. Now let's see human being. Here there is a presence of anterior opening. Upper lip and lower lip is called what? Mouth and the mouth is leading to the cavity. What cavity I told? That cavity name is buccal cavity. That cavity name is buccal cavity. What is another name for buccal cavity? Oral cavity. This that is buccal cavity. And the buccal cavity is leading to the short tube or long tube? Short tube. This is the short tube. Very very short tube. This short tube we call it as pharynx. pharynx short tube is called pharynx and the pharynx is leading to the long tube what is that long tube that long tube is esophagus that long tube is esophagus the another name for esophagus is food pipe another name for esophagus is food pipe and this esophagus is opening into the J shaped organ. What is that J shaped organ? That J shaped organ name name is stomach. This is the stomach, which is also called gastric, and shape of the stomach is J shape. And this stomach is divided into how many parts? Four parts. Yeah. What is the first part of the stomach? What is the first part of the stomach? The first part of the stomach we call it as cardiac. Which is very near to heart, and the second part of the stomach we call it as fundus, fundus, and the third part of the stomach we call it as main body, main body, and the fourth part of the stomach we call it as pyloric. Fourth part of the stomach we call it as what? Pyloric. These are the four parts. Means esophagus, cardiac, fundus, main body, and pyloric. This is about the stomach, and the stomach is leading to the intestine, which is intestine, small intestine. And what is the first part of small intestine? Duodenum. And the shape of the small intestine, sorry, sorry, shape of the duodenum is what shape? C shape. Yes, here we having the C shaped beautiful duodenum. C shaped duodenum, first part of small intestine. Means last part of stomach, pyloric. Is opening into the first part of a small intestine, which we call it as duodenum, and which is having what shape? C-shaped duodenum. And the duodenum is leading to the long coil or helicoid? Long coil. 
Yes, long coiled part. A long coiled part. What is this long coiled part? This is a long coiled jejunum. It is long coiled jejunum. It is long coiled jejunum. And the jejunum is leading to what coil? Jejunum is leading to highly coiled structure. What is it highly coiled? That highly coiled structure we call it as ilium. See, this is highly coiled which having number of foldings. Number of foldings. Number of foldings. This is highly coiled structure. What is that highly coiled structure name? That highly coiled structure name is ilium. Ilium. Means these are the three parts of small intestine. Duodenum, long coiled jejunum and highly coiled ilium. After ilium, large intestine. What is the first part of the large intestine? Cecum. The first part of the large intestine is cecum. In this manner there is the presence of cecum. This is the cecum. As of I told that cecum contains number of what is a number of microorganisms are present. Cecum contains number of microorganisms are present. From this cecum there is a presence of finger like projection which is a blind ended. Blind ended means one side open and other side is closed. That is called blind ended. This finger like structure we call it as vermiform appendix. Vermiform appendix. It will cause the disease which is called appendix. Vermiform. What is the meaning of vermi? Vermi means insect. Vermi means insect. A small, it is appearing like a small insect. Vermi means insect. It is in the form of insect. Another name for insect is vermi. It will cause a disease appendix. 24 hours stomach pain. That is called appendix. They will do the operation within 24 hours. They will cut that one and they will remove. So if they remove, then nothing will, if it is removed, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Why? Because this vermiform appendix in human being is vestigial organ. There is no use of it. Once upon a time it is used. Now in human beings, it is function is nothing. It is a waste because of that only vestigial organ. The vestigial organ name is what? Vermiform appendix. It is extending from where? It is extending from first part of large intestine, which is called cecum. From cecum, it is finger-like structure or in the form of insect, so it is called vermiform appendix. Okay. Cecum leading to what? Colon. Yes. What colon is that? Now let's see. Colon is moving upwards or downwards. Yes. The colon is moving like this means the colon is moving upwards so because of that only this is what colon ascending colon ascending colon and after that it is making the colon is moving in this direction transverse direction it is moving in a transverse direction like this it is moving in a transverse direction because of that only this is called what colon transverse colon transverse colon and finally transverse colon is once again now the colon is moving downwards upwards sir. downwards it is moving downwards because of that only this colon name is descending colon see based upon its movement it is called the colon is divided into so many parts moving upwards so ascending colon moving in transverse so down, moving downwards so it's descending colon and finally that descending colon is opening into a sigmoid shaped structure but it's not sigmoid shape that is called sigmoid colon sigmoid colon that is sigmoid colon and after sigmoid colon last part of large intestine what is the last part of large intestine the last part of large intestine is rectum so this is rectum rectum and rectum is opening into posterior opening. What is a posterior opening? Anus. And this is what? Rectum. This is the human elementary canal. Track. You have to keep this in your mind. Mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach. Four parts. Cardiac, fundus, main body, pyloric. And the small intestine. First part of small intestine is duodenum. Next one is long coil jejunum. Next one is highly coiled ileum. That's all. And next one, first part of large intestine, cecum, which contain number of bacteria. 
and see come having the some vestigial organ that vestigial organ is called vermiform appendix which is a vestigial organ and see come is leading to the ascending colon ascending colon leading to the transverse colon transverse colon is leading to the descending colon descending colon is leading to the sigmoid colon and finally last part of large intestine rectum rectum is opening into posterior opening is what anus so only it will let elementary canal begins with the anterior opening which we call it as a mouth and is ending with the posterior opening anus where digestion is started the digestion is started in the cavity buccal cavity which is also called oral cavity and where the digestion is completed the digestion is completed in the small intestine here after completion of digestion what is the second function absorption a maximum amount of absorption also takes place in where small intestine only this is important part inside of this only function is happening this inside this is the place where the function digestion which is also called hydrolysis will be takes place nothing but breaking down of complex molecules into simple absorbable molecule how many complex molecules three carbohydrates proteins and fats end product of carbohydrate glucose end products of protein amino acid end products of fat fatty acids and glycerols where all the end products are formed in small intestine where all these end products are absorbing same in small intestine they are absorbing into where blood why they are absorbing into the blood question mark yeah this is what the important thing that you have to keep in your mind and one more part you come to the buccal cavity look here buccal cavity buccal cavity contains what a common sense question it is what is present inside of your buccal cavity first of all yeah Your buccal cavity contains a tongue, freely movable tongue, and the tongue is made up with the muscle. Because of that, only we say that it contains our buccal cavity contains muscular tongue. Why it is called muscular tongue? Well, because it is made up with the muscle. Because of that, it is called muscular tongue. And along with that, our buccal cavity contains number of teeth. So many number of teeth will be present. Yeah, all these are the teeth. There is a presence of teeth is present in our buccal cavity. and along with these outside of our buccal cavity there is a branch of gland branch of gland as of i told now gland initially I told gland means its function is what secretion and what these glands are secreting they are secreting the saliva they are secreting the saliva because of that those glands we call them as what glands salivary glands so in our buccal cavity teeth is present muscular tongue is present and salivary glands is present So salivary glands are continuously secreting what saliva because of that only our mouth is always wet because of that only our mouth is always wet. We will discuss about this muscular tongue and salivary glands later. First, let's discuss about the teeth. So first, let's discuss about the teeth. About teeth, we can discuss. We can discuss about the teeth. Let's see. Come to the teeth. See, human dentition, human teeth are we are human beings are heterodont. We are heterodont. Heterodont. I will tell the meaning. And next, we are also di. Diphyodont teeth. Diphyodont. We are heterodont type of dentition, and we are diphyodont type of dentition, and we are we are thecodont type of dentition. Thecodont type of dentition. What is human dentition? Human dentition is heterodont type of dentition. Diphyodont type of dentition and thecodont type of dentition. In these three words, what is the common pronunciation that we are hearing? Heterodont, diphyodont, thecodont. What this don't is telling? The don't indicates teeth. Don't means what? Teeth because of the dentology. 
dentology. Don't means what? Teeth. Then what is the meaning of hetero? What is the meaning of hetero? Hetero means what? Different. D I F F E R E N T. Different. So we have a different type of teeth. So good. Hetero means what? Different. Don't means what? Teeth. We have a different type of teeth. Yes. How many different type of teeth we having? Four different type of teeth we having. We having four different. Means all of our teeth not looks similar. There are four different type of teeth are present in your human being. What are those four different type of teeth? The four different type of teeth are eye, incisors, canines, premolars, and finally molars. First type of teeth are incisors. Second type of teeth are canines. Third type of teeth are premolars. And fourth type of teeth are molars. You remember this with a clue. I, C, P, M, Modi. You remember it like that. I, C, P, M, Modi. Who is the Prime Minister of India? Modi. You remember it like that. But here I means not I. I means incisors teeth. C means not seeing. C means canines. P, M means not Prime Minister. Premolars. M means molars. You remember it a clue. I, C, P, M, Modi. Incisors, canines, premolars, molars. So four different type of teeth are present because of that only we are a heterodont type of dentition. And next, what is this diphyodont mean? Di means what? Di means two. Di means two. Means di indicates two. Fio indicates what? Fio indicates getting. Means we will get teeth in our lifespan. We will get teeth only two times. In our lifespan, we will get the teeth only two times. Because of that only, getting the teeth only two times. Di means two, pio means getting, don't means teeth. So human beings will get teeth only two times. If you are getting only one time, mono pio don't. If you are getting many times, poly pio don't type of. But we won't get the teeth many times, we will get only two times. So our dentition is di pio don't type of dentition. And next one, Tico don't. Don't means what? Teeth, as of I told. Don't means teeth. Tico means what? Tico indicates socket. Tico indicates socket. Our teeth are present inside of the socket. Why, sir, our teeth have to be present inside of the socket? Why because? Why because? For example, our teeth is not present inside of the socket. Socket means what? A empty space. Empty space, socket, a hole. Now remember, our, this is the, there is no socket here. If our teeth is just attached like this, if anyone slapped you, all the teeth will fall down. So, if, and we won't get the teeth so many times. You will get only the teeth only for two times. If it is happened, we have to go for hospital and we have to arrange the plastic teeth. Because our teeth, to avoid that, our teeth have to be strong. For that purpose only, there is a presence of sockets in our jaws. In our upper jaw and in our lower jaw, sockets will be present. And the maximum amount of teeth is present inside of that socket. The maximum amount of the teeth is present inside of that socket. And you can only able to see the little bit of the teeth. Maximum amount is present in the socket and you can only see the little bit. So because most of the teeth is present in the socket, because of that only our teeth are very strong teeth. Our teeth are very strong. See. Based upon different type of teeth, we are heterodont type of dentition. Based upon getting how many times we will get teeth, that indicates we are diphyodont. And based upon the location, where they are located, they are located in the socket. Because of that only, we are trichodont type of dentition. Yeah, how many different type of teeth? Four different type of teeth is present. Incisors, canines, premolars and as well as molars. These are the four different type of teeth teeth. Next, according to the age group, according to the age group, the number of teeth is various. According to the age group, the number of teeth is different. The number of teeth is different. What is this according to the age group? Number one, you take child who is below 10 years or below 11 years. If you count down this child teeth, you will get you can only able to count only 20 teeth 
the child will contain only 20 teeth only 20 teeth those who are below 10 years and after 11 years or after 12 years we call them as adolescents we call them as not child at that time we call those as adolescents for example you are if you are watching this video means you are an adolescent you are in the puc pre university so you are adolescents you have how many number of teeth when you count down your teeth you can able to count 28 teeth so child will have 20 teeth adolescents will have 28 teeth means from child to adolescence when you're growing up how many teeth are added eight teeth are added and next after 21 years after 21 years you are not supposed to call as adolescents you are supposed to call it as adult you are supposed to call it as adult your adult contains how many number of teeth 32 adult contains how many number of teeth 32 see according to the age group the number of teeth is various child having only 20 teeth and adolescents having only 28 teeth and only adult will have 32 adult means what those who are above 21 years they have for example your parents your parents have 32 teeth if you are watching this video you have 28 teeth if you are having any brother or sister those who are less than 10 years she may have or he may have only 20 teeth 20. see gradually teeth is increasing from here to here 8 teeth are added and from here to here how many teeth is added 4 4 teeth is added from here to here how many teeth is added from child to adult how many number of teeth is added 12 12 teeth is added from child to adolescence remember important question from child to adult how many number of teeth are added means 12 teeth is added these 12 teeth we will get only one time in our life out of 32 teeth 12 teeth we will get only one time in our life so these 12 teeth we call them as mono pheo don't teeth mono pheo don't teeth so out of 32 teeth 12 teeth we will get only one time in our life span so 12 teeth are mono pheo don't teeth so now we remember 32 minus 12 how much 20 20 means the number of teeth that the child has 20 these 20 teeth we will get two times so these are diphyodont teeth diphyodont teeth so now remember total number of teeth how many 32 out of 32 how many teeth you will get two times you are getting the two times 20 teeth we are getting two times so such teeth we call them as diphyodont teeth and only 12 teeth you will get how many teeth we are getting one time only 12 teeth we are getting one time so these are monophyodont teeth and these are diphyodont teeth so maximum number of teeth we are getting two times yeah 20 teeth you will get two times and only 12 teeth we will get only one time because of that only we consider as our dentition is diphyodont dentition not monophyodont dentition but there is a teeth that we will get only one time how many number of teeth we will get only one time 12 is the answer and how many number of teeth that you will get two times 20 how many number of teeth that the child having that number of teeth we will get two times how much number is a difference between the child and adult how much 12 this 12 teeth you will get only one time so out of 32 teeth, 12 teeth are monophyodont teeth and 20 teeth are diphyodont teeth. Maximum amount of the teeth we are getting two times. So our dentition is diphyodont dentition only. Yeah, how many different type of teeth that we have in? Incisors, canines, premolars and last type is molars. Yeah, number of teeth is various. Number of teeth is various. And for teeth, there is a formula. 
For a teeth, there is a formula. So that formula we call it as a dental formula. Dental formula we call it as. Do you think that the dental formula for a child, dental formula for adolescents, and the dental formula for adult is the same? No. Why? Because child having 20 teeth, adolescents having 28 teeth, adults also having 32 teeth. So dental formula is obviously different. The dental formula is obviously different. Yes, you remember here. Child. Child. Let me erase this. Child. Child contains how many number of teeth? 20. So, dental formula for child is 2, 1, 0, 2. This is the dental formula for child. 2, 1, 0, 2. I will explain that. 2102 is the dental formula for child. Sir, why you written only 4 times, sir? You can continue. 210222. In this manner, you can continue. No? We can't. Why? Because we have only how many different types of teeth? 4. This first two is indicating that these teeth are incisors. Second, this one is indicating they are canines. Zero is indicating they are premolars. And once again, two is indicating molars. Molars. This is the dental formula for child 2102. And if you go for adolescents, adolescents having how many number of teeth? 28. So dental formula will be changed. So what is the dental formula? 2, 1, 2, 2. This is the dental formula for adolescents. 2, 1, 2, 2 is the dental formula. These two incisors, this one canine, premolars, and this is molars. And if you go for the adult, adult having how many number of teeth? 32. So dental formula is obviously changed. What is the dental formula for adult? The dental formula for adult is 2, 1, 2, 3. This is the dental formula for adult. So according to the number of teeth is various, so dental formula is also various. The first type of, this first two is indicating they are incisors. This one is indicating they are canines. This 2 is indicating they are premolars and this 3, 2, 2 is indicating they are molars. So, dental formula for child is 2102. Dental formula for adolescents is 2122 2, for you. And for your parents, the dental formula is 2123. This is about today's class. And, and I will post next video. And you prepare this and I will give the clear cut explanation how to remember this formula and this what this formula and you refer to 102 and here 20 teeth is present how to calculate and the teeth is made up of what and how it will work and what is the function of the teeth in the next class uh, we will discuss and hope you you enjoyed the class and please if you like the class give me one like and as well as please subscribe to the channel which is niche dude a friendly dude, need to do channel. Thank you. Thank you all of you.